You know, I love these two stories, Hannah, Mary, and I wonder how I fit into this. It, it, it seems to me that what God was telling us here is that He can take nobodies and turn them into somebodies for Him. Sometimes you and I can be overwhelmed by a sense of uselessness. What kind of person does God use? How does God accomplish His purpose? Do you need money? Do you need fame? Do you need to be elected to the right seat? Do you need to hold the right office? Hannah, Mary, and me? Just think about this for a minute. Hannah and Mary had much in common. As I began to study the lives of these two mothers, these two ladies, these two women, there were so many zones of commonality between the two of them. It's amazing. But you know, the more I study the story, the more I realize how, just how much everything is connected. By the way, I just want to point this out. Do you know when Paul spoke to the church at Philippi, he wrote all about it in his letter to the Philippians. Paul reminded us that Jesus humbled himself, being of no reputation. He laid aside his reputation. <laughs> he became nobody in a sense. Now, I want you to just think about this. How did God accomplish all that God was about to accomplish for us through Jesus? Through His Son, King, Lord, who laid aside His privilege at the right hand of the Father, stepped aside, allowed Himself to be reduced to a mother's birth canal and to be born in a lowly stable, visited by shepherds and surrounded by sheep. These people all got it backwards. They were looking for a swashbuckling Messiah. They were waiting for the grand entrance. In fact, even at the end of Jesus' life, most assuredly he should have mounted an Arab stallion with a fine saddle and come parading down the Mount of Olives and cross over the Kidron Valley brandishing a sword. No, he came riding on a donkey. He walked into church with a fine coat on his back and took it off and put it in a box so that somebody else could wear it. Well, Hannah and Mary had much in common, if you please. I just share four thoughts with you. Number one, they both had humble beginnings. <laughs> I don't have time to get into all the details, but boy, they had humble beginnings. You know, I'd, I'm just convinced today that some of the people who are used mightily of God Begin with the least. You know, I love the story about Dr. David Livingston. You know Livingston and Stanley, when Stanley finally met him in Africa and said, Dr. Livingston, I presume. Do you know a story about Dr. Livingston? Do you know that he laid aside all the instruments of his work in Great Britain? He was examined by the Board of Regents. The Board of Regents determined that he was fit enough, and he qualified to go and to serve in the 1800s in Africa. And do you know that when they were ready to appoint him, they turned to him and they said to him, Mr. Livingston, 
We're going to send you to Africa. Where would you like to go and serve? He said, oh, it doesn't matter where I serve as long as it's forward. All I want to do is take off my coat and drop it in a box. They both had humble beginnings, Hannah and Mary. Number two, they both had unique challenges. <laughs> I don't have time to kind of dissect all these challenges, but they did. Hannah was roundly criticized by her entourage. She was mocked, made fun of. She was the one who couldn't bear a child. She was left out. She stuck out. She was considered useless. I can just imagine some of them saying, so you think you're somebody you know, back in her day, if you didn't know that, it was of the highest order to bear a child. Barrenness was not treated rather pleasantly back in those days. Barren wives were considered less than anybody else. And then, of course, there's Mary, you know, Mary had her own unique challenges. For one, she wasn't married. She didn't have a husband. Now back in her day, folks, don't minimize what it meant for a young girl to fall pregnant without a husband. She had a lot of explaining to do. In fact, everything that happened was just something she couldn't explain. They, they both had humble beginnings. They both had unique challenges, did Hannah and Mary. Uh, they both had miraculous pregnancies. By the way, I wrote a book. You need to get it. It's entitled Praying for a Miracle. It's just a little book. You can read it in 30 seconds and two hours. It's just about that big. Praying for a miracle. It's not a whole lot about anything excepting exactly what we're talking about here because they both had miraculous pregnancies. Do you, want, you don't want to know what a miracle is? A miracle is something that only God can do. A lot of people here listening today that can identify with that. But there was a fourth commonality between Hannah and Mary. They both had legacies of spiritual influence. They both had legacies of spiritual influence. I, I, I really believe that most people have really an opportunity to die with honor or to die with influence. Honor is a great thing. You and I can accumulate many means by which we die with honor, but do we die with influence? Honor is a status. Influence is a legacy. And I believe when Christ comes into your heart, he gives to all people the opportunity not only to die with honor, but to die with influence. And these two ladies both had legacies of spiritual influence. 